this. So, as most of you are aware, Chris D'Elia got married, didn't it, recently, right? Chris D'Elia, um, also known as a diddler, as people like to call him now, which is an absolute brutal nickname to give somebody, a diddler. But anyway, Chris D'Elia recently got married, and um, it looked nice. It looked lovely. Do you know what I mean? He looked good in a suit. His wife looked amazing in her outfit. I'm not going to lie. Congratulations to them. He's holding up his son, who looks like an absolute menace. Do you know what I mean, right? Enjoying life, having good times. Absolutely incredible to see, right? Weddings and all that stuff are always good. I've been to one. I usually, no, I've been to one in my adult age and I cried like an absolute baby. So if you're going to invite me to a wedding, please make sure you give me loads of napkins and tissues and shit because I will cry and cry and cry. Nothing better than seeing like love, you know what I mean? But it also got me thinking about everything that he's been through the last couple of years, right? It's been absolutely brutal, brutal last couple of years for him. And, you know, as per usual, life is life is fucking weird like that, where you go through such a traumatic time that he went through when he was accused of all that sexual misconduct stuff with alleged underage girls. And then you kind of cap it off with this amazing wedding and obviously the kid in between. Do you know what I mean? Like, life is just weird like that. You go through hell and then you come out the other side and you're shining. So I'm sure when these darkest moments, you ask Chris, would he picture himself smiling like this ear to ear, holding his kid next to his, you know, his wife-to-be or his wife at the time? Um, I probably, he probably wouldn't have thought that. You know what I mean? He probably wouldn't have thought that would be a, a reality. But it also got me thinking about what actually occurred and the wife as well included into it. Like... If you're Crystalia, surely at this point, if you if it gets to this, if it gets at this point, <laughs> that kid looks like Diplo. <laughs> if it gets at this point, right, you have to make a promise of yourself, promise of yourself, a promise of your spouse that you are never, and I repeat, never ever going to do what you were accused of doing ever again. You have to because any woman that would legitimately marry somebody who's been accused of what he was accused of, you really, really deserve the world. Like, you deserve everything. Like, everything. You deserve loyalty beyond loyalty. Like, if you need an arm amputated, he should be cutting it off with his fucking, with a butter knife in the kitchen. Do you know what I mean? Um, with a fucking banana in between his mouth. That's how deep it should be. There should be no questions asked. No questions asked. But something tells me i don't and again i don't want to be a bad <laughs> omen of this sort of stuff but something tells me this is just all like um bandages ba like a bandage ba ba bandage bandage oh why am i why can't i speak english this feels to me like a bit of like a like him trying to cover an open wound of a bandage to me personally because it's happened a bit too quickly in my opinion um, everything you've kind of gone through, dealing with what you have to deal with, the crumbling of his career, all this sort of stuff to find to go all the way straight to marriage and then to suddenly turn into this like quasi family man thing. I don't buy it, man. I really don't buy it. And I don't think it's a bad thing because I think in general, when it comes to Crystalia and stuff, right? I feel like that whole expose, exposing thing that happened with him, with underage girls and stuff, I just don't, I don't necessarily think it was as bad as people make it out to be because if anything, it revealed who he actually really is behind closed doors. He was pretending to be one person. And then, of course, when those girls all came out, we all kind of saw, oh, shit, this guy's a real horn dog. Do you know what I mean? He goes, he basically uses a tour as an excuse to just hook up with girls or hook up with his fans. You know what I mean? And sometimes they happen to be really, really young. So if anything, that ex that um that whole affair should have been, uh, I think a a point to maybe just accept who you actually are and embrace it. And it doesn't mean you should go around and turn into Leonardo DiCaprio and start dating only models under the age of twenty five and shit. But I think there should have been more of an acceptance of that's part of who he actually is, as opposed to no 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 that's not me now suddenly i'm a family man now i'm just posting pictures of my kid now i'm getting tattoos on my neck 40 representing my woman like all this nonsense i just think it's just dumb because if anything it just kind of denies who you are and it kind of puts off the inevitable which will be ending up you know relapsing and doing what you did before because that's who you actually are you're doing it for years anyway i don't know if you could just change all of a sudden of in the course of a day or in the course of a, of a wedding or something um so optimistically the optimist in me would be like, you know what? I would love it if this would be the point where 
this is like a redemption. This is like the point where, okay, I'm a new man now, you know, I'm promising you wife because legitimately, like I said before, like the fact that this lady is willing to marry this guy after everything that's gone on is mad to me. It's the same way how I can't understand. And I wish maybe I, maybe I could read a document. Maybe I watch a documentary or something. I would love to find out what goes in the mind of a woman who kind of ends up marrying like a serial rapist or something, which I mean, those kind of abhorrent crimes where somebody brutalizes a woman. But then another woman decides, you know what, I want to marry him. It's it's a bit different from like women that like to hook up with jailbirds because, you know, guys can be in prison for a number of things. It doesn't always need to include violence against women. But I mean specifically the type of woman who is okay to overlook like sexual misconduct, rape, um, underage stuff, loads of adultery, all that kind of stuff. I, I want to know what goes into the mind of those women. Like, you know what? I'm going to be different. I'm going to be one to change them. I'd love it. 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 Um, but yeah, it would be nice to see. It'd be nice to, it would be nice if this was the, the, the point where he changed for real. Okay, cool. I did what I did. I fucked up. I messed up in a big way, but I'm going to be a better man for it. But something tells me this is just, this is just papering over the cracks for me and personally but i don't know but again i hope for the wife's sake it isn't the case because she seems absolutely lovely from the clips i've seen online of them interacting with each other she's legitimately seems like she is actually funny like legit funny not just like oh like a hot girl that makes a joke no like she's actually got you know good chops good banter and whatnot and the fact that she stood next to him along you know during the whole entire thing ordeal and I think I read correctly I think I read correctly that she was actually pregnant during the whole time it was going on so it wasn't even like <laughs> it was an easy situation to go through I mean she was going through such a mad thing in in life young lady pregnant and suddenly the guy that you're with is being accused of you know being a flipping serial diddler and stuff it's absolutely mad so Chris D'Elia owes it to that woman to be absolutely loyal until the day that they both die. Do you know what I mean? Like, loyal to the core, loyal beyond belief, like, no missteps whatsoever. But something tells me that's not going to happen. But, you know, I would hope I'll be proven wrong with this. I really would hope I'll be proven wrong with this. But you know how these guys are, man. It looks like they use, they use flipping touring and doing stand-up comedy as an excuse to just hook up with girls, which is really bizarre, in my opinion, especially when they're all grown men and have kids and stuff. It's a bit strange, but... Anyway, what do I know? What do I know? Let's just see what people, what people are saying in the chat here. Uh, what people are saying in the chat? Uh, what a chance you must talk to transgender. Da, da. Oh, Jess. Uh, big up Jess Fury. Yes, Jess is in the chat. What's she saying? Jess is saying, he got married on the two-year anniversary of the first leaked DM. I bet that he's trying to rewrite that story history on that. Oof, really? He got married on the two-year God damn. Um, I wish Brenda would disappear for two years like Chris and Felon did negate the misconduct, you know. True. I don't see <clears throat> so what people are saying here. Let me know how that goes, says as follows. I honestly see a big change in him. He's more grown up and he seems more sincere. I'm glad for him. He dev seems better off from the struggle. Hmm, okay. To be honest, he's still funny. That's one thing I have to give Chris Delia. From the clips I've seen of him on TFAT K and not on TFAT K, from the clips I've seen of him on fucking um, King of the Sting, the guy is legitimately hilarious. There's no denying that Chris D'Elia is funny as fuck, right? Um, it's a shame he's not as funny at, on stage as he is on podcasts, but, you know, we all can't have everything in the world. But he's legitimately hilarious. And you can tell he's starting to be funnier because he's, you know, starting to get over that whole trauma of what he went through. But beforehand, he was a bit, he was like looking like a, like a mummy. Do you know what I mean? He was still in a bit of a daze about what had, had happened and what had occurred in terms of his career. But what can he do? Um, Steve Harvey Oswald says, remember that looks like on his face when he found out about the screen caps? <laughs> oh, man. That, that look of terror on his face, man. I think all men can relate to that look of terror when you think you've done something fucked up and you're not sure if you got caught. But the level of fucked up that he did is another level, mate. I mean, like, fucking snapchat cheating is mad isn't it um i still listen to all delia's podcasts and you can tell the whole thing has really damaged him mentally i don't think a scandal automatically cancels out the fact that he's a funny though yeah exactly see um talent is irrespective of character defects no for sure I, i'm I, i've said for the longest time here before on the show i'm not sure if you guys uh, have listened to me for a while but my opinion on counterculture has always been as follows i'm not a fan of it the only cancel culture that I like 
is a type where your fans decide they don't want to listen or watch you anymore and then you have to basically disappear into the abyss but the idea that gatekeepers and platforms and stuff can tell you when you can have a career and when you cannot have a career I don't like at all like I, I, I prefer much if the fans decide no we think you're a cunt we don't want to support you anymore and then they stop buying your tickets they stop tuning into your show and you die a slow death but the fact that these platforms can come in and say no podcast for you you get a podcast you get sponsors you don't get sponsors I hate all that shit I think that's absolutely horrendous so if Chris Alea fans still like him and want to listen to him you know rant and do jokes and shit online why not he should be free to do so. Do you know what I mean? Regardless of how repugnant what he's been accused of was, it just is what it is. Um, I think art should always exist like that. Uh, a lot of people saying here, yeah, the seems like a tryhard, an airhead. John Wallace. Um, John Valdez says, I have no respect for him. Who says we wouldn't cancel gravity if we found out Isaac <laughs> Newton was a creep? <laughs> that's a bit of a mad stretch but i get it um ryan anderson says what's up man big up ryan anderson big up big up chill zone says i don't see people give him a pass i don't see how people give him a pass no one's really given him in the past chill zone that's the thing i think you're mistaking it i think you're mistaking the fact that you see him as a pass it's not the fact that he's seen as a pass he's seen because obviously he comes from a wealthy family so he's never going to just disappear and go work at flipping you know trader joe's it's not going to happen and also, his entire life, your career has been based on being somewhat a, a public figure, being a content creator online. Um, if he's involved in a scandal and he has no ability to make money any other way, what else is he meant to do? Do you know what I mean? He has to just go back and start streaming online. The, the, the only problem he has is that he's kind of beholden to his fans. If his fans start fucking with him, that's when he's fucked. But in terms of industry stuff, that's over now because of the scandal. He's never going to be a Hollywood actor again. He's never going to probably going to be on TV ever again after that whole thing. So that's completely over. But I don't think that means people give him a pass, you know? 